And now to deliver a very timely talk, I'd like to welcome Thais and I, Derek. Thanks, Brady. Hello, my name is Thais Nye-Derich, and I am writing a novel set in the future. For my novel, I'm researching ectogenesis, which is my topic for today. Ectogenesis is the development of a mammalian embryo in an artificial environment. So since I'm a writer, I'm going to tell you a story as a way to explain it. And it begins in the year 2052. Tanya Kirchhoff is a pregnant 40-year-old PhD candidate. She wants to finish her thesis before her child is born. The title of her thesis is Ectogenesis. Is it as easy as one, two, three? At almost two months pregnant, Tanya writes a very strong chapter on the first researchers to successfully grow these lambs in bio bags from the human equivalent of 23 weeks to full term. Kanya wonders how she's gonna weave in when private funding started. She cites this tweet from Elon Musk, who's worried about population collapse and an advertising CEO's response, synthetic looms. Kanya's ring vibrates and she switches on her VR and walks into her doctor's appointment. Although natural birth is still technically legal, Kanya's doctor is shocked to see a six-week-old embryo on the ultrasound. In year 2052, it is barbaric to suffer through pregnancy. Her doctor reminds her of the safety of ectogenesis and the equality among genders and sexual minorities that it's given the world. This is all true, but Kanya just finished a chapter of the long ago cesarean section that increased at an alarming rate, not because of improved outcomes, but because of legal and economic conditions of the time. Was it just yesterday that Kanya opened her feed to see womb tech stock increase 50%? Kanya's friends enjoyed watching their fetuses grow on the live stream, but once they picked up their babies at the womb tech warehouses, they still struggled with Old, uh, age old issues like um, affordable health care and child care and equal division of domestic labor. Nonetheless, her friends were surprised that Kanya decided to go against the mainstream. They asked her if she thought her body would remember how to give birth. They told her that she was brave. Kanya tried to remember when public opinion started to shift, and she found this date in 2021 when the International Society for Stem Cell Research lifted the 14-day limit on human embryo research. Kanya wrote about the first ex utero machines to grow mouse fetuses with a heartbeat, not much different from the ones developed by Womb Tech today. But in 2030, public opinion really shifted with these machines that started saving millions of premature infants as early as 23 weeks. Maybe Kanya was an outlier, but she thought her friends were the brave ones. Until synthetic eggs passed clinical trials, the eggs supporting Womb Tech Inc. were extracted from human bodies. How many injections did her friends agree to? Was it 60 hours of procedures and doctor's visits? Kanya wasn't convinced that ectogenesis was as easy as one, two, three. As unpopular as it was, Kanya wanted a natural birth. She wanted the benefits to her brain and her child's brain, and she really just wanted people to trust her ability to make good decisions for herself. As her pregnancy became noticeable, social and legal pressures increased. Her doctor threatened to call Child Protective Services unless she transitioned her pregnancy to an artificial womb. So Kanya was forced to hide which proved very productive for her writing. She completed her thesis, and when her baby was born, she described it as pure reverence. Back at work, Kanya breastfed in the meditation room, a gift in 2052 
that less than 1% of people could give their children. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thais. Um, what did you see as the relation between this talk and your book? Yeah, so the inspiration um, for my book was uh, this new science coming out and a uh, imaginary vision of a warehouse full of babies growing in um, artificial wombs. So I wrote from that visual. Got it. Well, thank you very much for being with us today, Thais. Thank you, Brady. Thank you.